This episode of Defining Diabetes is sponsored by Dexcom, Omnipod, the Contour Next One Blood Glucose Meter, Touched by Type 1, and the T1D Exchange. I almost made this one larger episode with three topics in it, and then I decided if I didn't break them apart, future listeners wouldn't be able to find them. So this is a Defining Diabetes episode about the Dawn phenomenon. But there are two others that go with it. The other one's called Defining Diabetes Feet on the Floor, and the third one Defining Diabetes Smoji Effect. I know I'm not saying that right. Samoji? Samoji. You'll find it. Anyway, the three of them are oddly similar, but completely different, and every one of these ideas needs to be understood. I'm not going to be explaining them by myself. I'm going to have Jenny Smith with me. I'll tell you a little bit more about Jenny in a second. But first, please remember that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Please always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan or becoming bold with insulin. If the mood should strike you and you'd like to find out more about the Dexcom G6 continuous glucose monitor, please go to Dexcom.com forward slash juice box. If you're looking for a free, no obligation demo of the Omnipod tubeless insulin pump, myomnipod.com forward slash juice box. Want to add your voice to some terrific type 1 diabetes research without ever leaving your home? You can do it right there from your phone in just a couple of minutes. T1D Exchange dot org forward slash juice box to check out the blood glucose meter that Arden uses the contour next one you go to contournext.com forward slash juice box and of course touched by type one dot org to see type one diabetes advocacy done correctly my friend Jenny Smith has had type one diabetes for over 30 years Jennifer holds a bachelor's degree in human nutrition and biology from the University of Wisconsin she is a registered and licensed dietitian, a certified diabetes educator, and a certified trainer on most makes and models of insulin pumps and continuous glucose monitoring systems. She is also a frequent contributor to the Juice Box podcast. And I find Jenny's input about type 1 diabetes and the management of insulin and things around type 1 to be completely invaluable. She is my favorite person. This is the one that everyone gets told about, right? At some point overnight, like I don't know, around 3 a.m. or maybe all the way up to 8 o'clock, your body is just going to make your blood sugar higher. Maybe. I would say in a good, I mean, if I had to give a percent to it, I would say a good 95% of people, once they know to watch or something and or, you know, let's say they've been listening to a lot of like the pro tips episodes and they're like trying to do basal evaluation and whatnot. And they're like, huh, look at that. This is what's actually going on. And I keep fighting it with this and this and this, Mm -hmm. and it's actually not that problem. It's relative to the basal insulin, right? So the dawn phenomenon is another reason for having a high blood sugar when you wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's specific in that these are hormones that are supposed to be being released in this time period of sort of the sleep-wake cycle. Yeah. And they're there whether you have diabetes or not. Right. Right. It's just that the person with diabetes, obviously, with glucose monitoring, we can see what's happening and it's not controlled. So we have to cover with more insulin in order to offset these hormones, growth factor hormones, um, cortisol, all these things that are sort of ramping up around two, three o'clock in the morning, usually through about eight o'clock in the morning. They're ramping up. And that ramp up in hormone will start to drive blood sugar up if you don't counter it with extra insulin. Most people counter it with extra basal insulin at a certain time period. Their basal rate may go up a notch to impact the coming increase in insulin need. And people on MDI see it more drastically when they inject their 
basal insulin in the morning because in those last six and eight hours of a 24-hour basal insulin, sometimes you see a decrease, especially with the older ones, right? Levomir yes. and Lantus. Correct. And and so it might look even worse. I have a question that you may or may not know the answer to. What if I'm a shift worker and I'm awake from three to eight? Do I still see it? No. <sighs> Again, it's more specific to your typical sleep cycle. Okay, it's attached to sleep, not time. Right. So if you're a shift worker and your shift remains pretty stable, right? Let's say that you sleep from noon until 8 p.m. every day. Mm -hmm. Your smoggy effect might actually be from 3 p.m. until 8 p.m. then or 4, 4 p.m. until 8 p.m. It would be within a sleep cycle just because it's not technically 3 o'clock in the morning. You just said smoky. Do you mean dawn? What? Oh, dawn. Yeah. Yes. Hey, Sorry. Do, no, it's okay. Um, yeah. So the dawn really is going to impact you in those waking hours or those pre-waking to waking hours, regardless of when your sleep cycle is. So this 3 a.m. to 8 a.m., you know, quote unquote norm that people see is probably such a large swath of time because people go to bed at different times. And so it, it's maybe more about how long you've been asleep and how long it is until you wake up, like somewhere in that space. Like, you know, if I went to bed at 10 p.m. every night and I saw this increase at 3 a.m., then you're saying that if I was on shift work and went to bed at 10 a.m. every day, I might see the same thing at 3 p.m. Right. That makes yeah, sense? Within exactly. Okay. Yep. So that's attached to your sleep, not the time of day. Correct. Um, I get, and it, would smoggy be the same thing then? Is it? Let me think. Hold on. I actually have to think this through. <laughs> that would be a really interesting. I, I guess it would be the same thing if you think about high blood sugars in the morning and you've got your basal dialed in. You know that it's controlling the dawn phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And now today, let's say you look at your CGM and you see that you have a a, you had a low blood sugar you didn't realize you didn't treat it overnight and now you wake up with this high blood sugar in the morning that would be more the samogi could be regardless that. again of whether or not you're sleeping from 10 p.m until 8 a.m right. or you're sleeping from noon until 8 p.m okay i i have to i have to figure something out in the world and name it after myself i love that this guy's been <laughs> dead for 50 years and we're saying his name and, it, and, it's, and, some and it's a fun name yeah, too yeah and some doctor in new jersey got some juice off it in the other episode because i googled wrong <laughs> right exactly that's so, that's kind of fun i know my name wouldn't be very fun to name something after smith so so if you're on a pump and you have dawn phenomenon you're going to need an increase in basal insulin prior to when you see the rise through the rise correct now there's an interesting and you might I have thought to maybe bring it up, but there's an interesting thing that some people even see, they might see a small incremental increase. So let's say they adjust their basal slightly. Mm -hmm. It's not too much, let's say 0 0.05. It's tiny incremental change. But then when they've done their basal testing, that seems to work. But now that they're noticing more, they see when they finally do get up, there's this more considerable rise in blood sugar, which a lot of people sort of, and we referred to as like the foot on the floor syndrome. That's I mean, it's the not next technically like a syndrome yeah. or like <laughs> anything. It's, it's just, it's literally you get out of bed and 30 minutes later, your blood sugar could be going from 82 all the way up to 150. And you're like, what the heck? Yeah. I did my basal testing. What's going on here? And I, I think in that regard, it's actually easier to pay attention over the course of a couple of days mm -hmm. and see what is your average rise right. of the foot on the floor like impact that you're getting. Let's say over the course of three days, you look at this and you're like, yep, my blood sugar went up 40 points. It went up 60 points. It went up 50 points. Great. You're getting an average of a 50 point rise in your blood sugar you know, soon after you wake up in the morning, it's rather than fiddling with your basil, it's actually easier to just bolus. bolus. That's what I tell people to do. That's to what correct I do for the rise you're expecting to yeah, have. That's what I do for Arden. And that's what I, uh, that's how I talk to other people about it. Dawn phenomenon, totally tackleable with basal insulin. 
you know, on a pump, obviously easier, but making sure that you don't have a deficit of basal if you're MDI in that time frame, doing that by, you know, moving around on the clock when you inject your basal. Um, the other one, I guess we're going to do, well, okay. So I hope everyone enjoyed that. There's going to be another one about feet on the floor. So go listen to that one too. If you'd like to hire Jenny to help you with your type 1 diabetes, check her out at integrateddiabetes.com. Thanks so much to the Omnipod tubeless insulin pump. If you'd like to get a free no obligation demo of the Omnipod, do it now at myomnipod.com forward slash juice box. Learn more about the Dexcom G6 continuous glucose monitor. See those trends. See your direction. See your speed. Dexcom.com forward slash juice box. Get the best blood glucose meter on the market, in my opinion, at contournext.com forward slash juice box. You want to see people doing good things for other people with type 1 diabetes? You need to go to touchedbytype1.org. And of course, to get involved simply in some type 1 research that helps everyone with type 1 diabetes. And to do that right there from your cell phone or from your sofa without ever leaving your house in just a few minutes t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box. You go to those links, you are doing something good for yourself, good for somebody else, and supporting the podcast. All of those links are available right here in the show notes of your podcast player. And they're also at juiceboxpodcast.com. Click the links, support the show. You all should know, by the way, when I say click the links, support the show, the pantameter of that reminds me of Save the cheerleader, save the world from heroes. Do you remember that TV show on NBC? Anyway, there's a little look into my head. There are countless other episodes of Defining Diabetes available for you right now. And that's probably a lie because they are countable. There's not so many of them that I can't count them, but I'm not going to count them. A couple of ways to get to them. Go into your podcast app, search Defining Diabetes, they'll all pop up. Uh, Go into the stream in your podcast app, all episodes, scroll down, you'll see them. You can go to juiceboxpodcast.com and scroll down a little bit, right? And you'll see all kinds of stuff. Let me tell you some of the stuff you'll see on the main page. All the After Dark episodes. Right now we have After Dark Divorced and Co-Parenting, After Dark Sex with Type 1 from a Male Perspective, Sex with Type 1 from a Female Perspective, Depression and Self-Harm, Trauma and Addiction, Weed Smoking, Drinking with type 1 diabetes. There's also all kinds of episodes that are focused on algorithm pumping. And then, you know what? You could actually click. Oh, excuse me. Look up. Oh, hold on. Excuse me. Also, I have all the pro tip episodes right there on the front page and recent episodes. Now, if you go to, uh, then you click on a link up top, right? It says Juice Box Podcast. You click on that. Now, all of a sudden, you're looking at the defining diabetes episodes. There's fat and protein rise, compression low, and interstitial fluid, rage bolus, bump and nudge, feeding insulin. These little diabetes terms that maybe you're just like, I don't know what they mean when they say insulin resistance. But I have an episode where Jenny and I explain that to you. Ketones, stop the arrows, brittle diabetes, low before high, pre-bolus, trust what you know will happen, will happen. Glycemic index and glycemic load as a defining diabetes, but... You know what we have coming up? A pro tip about it. There's non-compliance, an algorithm, and on and on and on and on. If there's a diabetes term that's been said out loud, Jenny and I have defined it on defining diabetes. Two new ones that are out right now around this, like I mentioned in the beginning, I think go together with this one. The other two are feet on the floor and the smoji effect. The Samogi effect. I don't know how to say that word, but you'll say it. It'll be the only word that sounds like Samoji when you read it. Looking for a great doctor or other type of diabetes practitioner? Check out, check out, woo, there goes my voice. Check out juiceboxdocs.com, an ever-growing list of podcast listeners' favorite practitioners. Absolutely free. Go in there, find one, or send me one to add. Diabetes Pro Tip episodes can actually be found in all the places I just described in your podcast app and at diabetesprotip.com. If you're enjoying the podcast, please consider sharing it with someone else. 